when you come on. Hi, everybody. How is, I can't see anybody. How is everybody? No, oh, we got a light over there. Hi, you guys. Yeah, not here too in Vegas, but that's almost, really, wait, hot here too. <laughs> hot here too in Vegas, but that's redundant. You're right, it gets super hot in Vegas. Super hot, super hot, y'all. Super duper hot. Hi, there. We only have one little shadow. Hold on. One day I'll get it right. Probably never, but in theory, one day I'll get it right. How is everybody? Oh my God, it's going so quick. I, 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 there she is. She is exhausted, y'all, from Pittsburgh, Australia. Hey, little monkeys, love the handle. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, yes, exhausted. How was everybody's Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. All the mummies, all the beautiful mummies. Yeah, it was a fun Mother's Day. Oh my God, my Mother's Day, what did I do? Oh, I was driving home from Arizona. So I was coming back from the Grand Canyon. So I spent like seven hours, I've got my sports bra on. I just came from training. I have to get back in shape. I'm out of shape. So I gotta get back in shape. So that requires somebody to help me with my arms. <laughs> My legs are okay, but my arms, I need help. Can you talk to my son? Oh, yeah, today, 44th birthday. Happy birthday, mothers, mother. You know, I want to swear right now, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah, so I was, you're, you were in Arizona too, love of Scorpio. Yeah, that, I'm trying to get all my necklaces correct again. Um, but yeah, we were in the Grand Canyon and it was super fun. Um, Super fun. Yeah. I mean, I had fun. So I was driving home. There was some lunatic in Kingsman, Arizona. So I pulled off the freeway, went to Kingsman. Hi, Michelle. Um, went to Kingsman, Arizona. Yeah, bat bat wings. I know. I love the bat wing lady. <laughs> chicken wings, bat wings. One of my friends tattooed a chicken wing on the back of her arm. For real. Okay. Um, aw, three months old. How cute. Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't, but yeah, no, we were in Kingsman, Arizona. So I got out to get, of course, Starbucks. Don't yell. Don't be jealous. Don't yell. Um, everybody's like Starbucks. I'm like, yeah. And some lunatic, some, okay. There were some homeless people in the parking lot of the store and yeah, bingo arms <laughs> and the homeless were screaming or whatever they were doing. And there was a guy in a truck. And he kept talking to this old man who had walked up, like holding his little shopping cart. And he kept going, yeah, those Californians, they're bringing, hi, Ashley. Aw, there's cute Ashley. You guys, sign up for Ashley's yoga course. She's teaching yoga. Yeah, I can't teach you that. She can teach you that. She's a master. Ashley's a yoga master. So, yeah, she'd want to slap the shit out of me. Slap, <laughs> For better. Um, so this, this guy in the parking lot was screaming at the old man that had walked up in the parking lot. And the old man was like, he's like, I called the police on the homeless. And then the guy's like, yeah, those Californians. Meanwhile, my license plate has California on it. And he's like, those Californians, those Californians. And I'm just looking at him. <laughs> like this. I didn't say anything because I was pretty sure he was going to shoot me if I did. So I didn't say anything. But he kept going on and on about those Californians, those things. <laughs> Ashley, me too. <laughs> yeah, no, I did hear voices. I do hear spirits there. I'm convinced the whole park is like, well, I'll tell you in a second. But I did hear spirits there, actually. Going down the canyon, I heard um, I heard voices that weren't there. I mean, there are people going down. Oh, your daughter's in labor. That's so great. Um, I heard I was arrested for DWI. Ah, oh, shit. Christopher, really? Damn it. Damn it. Stop drinking. Or at least drink outside of your vehicle. I'm sorry. That's It's a big scam. They don't care if you're drunk or not. They just want your 10 grand. So yeah, um, 
but I did hear, I did hear, I felt spirit. Yeah, my anxiety. Oh, was your anxiety? I love the canyon, but I'm so, um, it was fucking hot. Yeah, I'm so like tired when I get up the canyon. So I started three in the morning and I go down the canyon and I go down and I go to the river and I go across the river. So it's pitch black when I'm starting. Thank you all for the super chats, you guys. So it's like pitch black. And then because by 6.30, by 5.30, this, Ken is doing great. I saw her on Sunday when I got home. Um, yeah, I love Starbucks. Yeah, me too. My son blocked me out. We haven't spoken in three years. Aw, Annie, I totally get it. I've been blocked. Well, they deny having social media, but I've been blocked on the phone by everybody. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know that it was a visit from Keithy, but I did hear voices. And I was going down and across the river. I let Keithy's ashes go in the river down there. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. And I, well, that's like hot yoga in Arizona, I'm sure. So I, when I was going down the down there, I crossed the river and then I go up the other side, which was 9.5 miles, 9.5 miles up a fucking 90 degree angle grade. And I was like, which is part of the fun. Like when I get four miles up there, I'm like, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And then when I'm like three miles from the top, I'm like, oh, fuck off. Yeah, the Colorado River. Keith's ashes are already in there. I was like, oh, fuck off, right? And then, oh, my God. And thank you, Donna. Thank you so much. Oh, you just spread your mom's ashes in Palm Desert. Keithy's in Palm Desert. Well, he's in Palm Springs at the top of San Jacinto and off I threw them over where the tram is too. I still have way, 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 way more um, ashes. So I spread the ashes wherever I go, all over. Just piece by piece so he's all over the world wherever I go. I don't really go all over the world. But it was something else. So anyway, I ran that. And then I got to the top. This Asian girl was up my ass. Okay, and she only started from like four miles down the trail. And she, um, let's see, she she literally, like I moved over to let her go by me. And still, she insisted on stopping and going behind me. I was like, okay, bitch, like, no, I don't like you. Anyway, long story short, made it to the top, yay. And then the next day went down and to the river again and back up. So two days in a row. So there was that. And that was super fun. It was super fun. Yeah, but a girl from the ring. I don't know what a girl from Ashley. Can you expand? What is it? Yeah, Ashley, tell them. Um, my girlfriend dreamed of Keith and he said to her, thank you for loving my mom. Literally on Mother's Day. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for telling me that. Thank your girlfriend. Thank you. Thank you for that. That is so sweet. That is the best thing. Yeah, that's the best thing in the world. Girl from the ring. Wait, Sloan, I need a reading. When are you available? I have no idea when I'm available. <laughs> I really don't know. Okay, oh, I was joking about Gail. Girl from the ring. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Yeah, the, I keep enough H2O. That's water, right? Yeah, no, I have enough water. I'm not ever worried about the water because I'll drink it out of the river, but I'm not worried because they have Indian gardens where you can fill up your water, but they changed the name of Indian gardens to have a Sioux gardens because you can't say Indian gardens anymore. Right. Mm. Exactly. So have you heard of the people that leave rehab who leave their house without telling anybody? Have you heard of people? Yeah, I'm pretty sure drug addicts sneaking away from rehab is a thing. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, that's a thing. Um, yeah, so anyway, it was really fun, and then we drove to Sedona, and Sedona, I do not like Sedona at all. I do not like Sedona in any which way. What's, oh, hi, Bryce, there you are. <laughs> there you are, there's Bryce. He is amazing. You should go check him out, everybody. Um, so we went to Sedona and I do not like Sedona. 
I do not like Sedona at all in any sense of the word. Yeah, I, I feel like Sedona has bad energy. Um, no, I didn't. This is this is just something to cover chicken neck. I'm trying to cover it, but it's not really enough. If you see me wearing a necklace up here, it's to cover this because I, whatever. Anyway, um, it's to cover the chicken neck. Yeah, no, Sedona is very touristy and it's like, I just, it's dead energy. Yeah, I don't like it there. I was just like, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And then um, Flagstaff, there are, they say there's vortexes there, but let me ask you this. On the sign of any, like on every door in Sedona is a sign saying vortex trips, vortex this, vortex that. And I'm like, like, why are you prostituting off of vortexes? Like, what's that about, right? What's that about? Why are you doing that? So it's a no for me. Um, yeah, no, the chicken neck. In fact, this necklace is bothering me. So I may take it off and be without it because it's like new age or crap. Yeah. And then all the people in, I mean, I met some nice ladies one lady told me that all the property in Sedona was being that owned a store there was being um, taken taken over by uh, Chinese corporations. And on the way into Sedona, they have this. Okay, I can't get this off. Anyway, they have they have this really nice. <laughs> let me get dressed. They have this really nice um, park that you go into and you drop into it, and it's really pretty. But then they have all, I'm going to wear a turtleneck next time, Sandy. I live in turtlenecks, but I'm, I'm having hot flashes because I'm that old. So like, anyhow, um, yeah, Sedona is being sold out. That, but I don't like the energy there. It's like, they say it heals you, but what it does is it sucks you into the ground. I don't like it. Like I can't, I'm driving in there and I'm like, Mew Mew is somewhere around here. She's really mad at me. I bathed her this morning. I'm kind of, look, I'm like kind of stuffy from her. Uh, it could be Wi-Fi. It could be hot flashes. I'm falling apart. So that's why I have to go to my trainer. Um, those were the days hot flashes, right? Um, anyway, then we went to Flagstaff and there's a restaurant there. There's a hotel there called Little America and it's got the selenite, um, lights all in the hotel it's really beautiful and we ate there before but we didn't want to eat there so we drove from Flagstaff down that boring ass stupid road and when it would say 10 miles I'm like oh thank god five miles oh thank god only 40 more to go I'd like to get off this stupid road so anyway yeah those are two places I'm not living or moving to that's not happening and it was kind of, there's us Leo's anti-anything establishment. Yeah. And um, yeah, I could throw a scarf on, right? But yeah, so I was just like, I'm not going to live in Flagstaff either. I don't understand Flagstaff. It seems like it should be good. And I met a lot of nice people in Flagstaff that were in the park. We did eat in, um, in the hotel. Oh my God, I got to tell you the story. So that really expensive hotel, let me find the name of it. I can never, it's like, it's like the Trev, I, let me, let me spell it for you. Anyway, it's like a New England hotel. That's what it's like. Hold on. <coughs> oh my God, excuse me. It's like a New England hotel. So it's like East Coast, New England. It reminds me of the British in like the Hamptons, you know, like they think they're all whoop de doo right? They're, um, yeah, we drove by Prescott. Our friend lived there, Terry, John's best friend, lived in Prescott, Arizona. Terry, he was our homicide. We both each have homicide detective besties and Terry lived in Prescott. He passed away a few years ago. I think he was only like 71 or whatever it was, but... Anyway, listen to this funny thing at this, <laughs> this hotel. Um, so we get to this hotel and it's by uh, Bright Angel, right? And it's the most expensive hotel in the park. So maybe 
It's El Tovar, El Tovar Hotel in the Grand Canyon, okay? And it's right by the Hopi Indian Observe. There's a um, an art gallery from a building they made. Anyway, it's like New England. It's all I'm going to say. It's like fucking New England, which it's East Coast. It's New England, and it's all of that that I can't stand because I grew up around that. So it makes me insane, okay? Like when people think they're better or they dress a certain way or they're understated because I just, I go bananas because I grew up in a home like that. You know, um, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, all of that. I can't stand it. No. Anyway, the hotel, when we walked in, there's a dining room. There's a lounge but you can get things like um, truffle fries. Okay, that would be so yummy. But that's the last thing I need, okay, is truffle fries. Because <laughs> I'll eat them and I'll put on weight. So anyway, there's the restaurant. So I go up to the maitre d' guy who's dressed like a Vegas mob member. And he's there. And I'm like, so I called. I'm like, do you have any reservations? No reservations. This was the day before. So then I went in. They have like shrimp in the lounge and bar stuff, but I don't drink and I don't like shrimp. And I'm not going to gain weight just eating fries. I need to have salmon, right? So talking to Mr. Maitre D, who doesn't, I, I don't know what he does, but he's like a gangster mafia ignoring you. He's too good for you kind of guy. And he's older. So I'm like, what, how do I how do I get in there? If I even gain a pound, I go crazy, Casey. So, or not Casey, whoever said that. So I go, I go bananas. If I gain a pound and I'm up three pounds, four pounds, possibly. My trainer's like, how's your eating? And I'm like, you know, it's not, it's salmon. And I may have eaten a bunch of protein bars and I could have eaten Dairy Queen. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but I did. Um, anyway, me, I see Dairy Queen and I'm like, it's all up. Well, my muscle needs to go down four pounds for it to still be muscle. But anyway, so I go to the dude. I'm like, hey, how do we get a reservation? He goes, well, you can come back at 4.30 in the afternoon and you can see. <laughs> no, I'm laughing. It's actually little candies I was eating and all kinds of shit. Could have eaten. I did eat dairy. I did eat Dairy Queen. I'm telling you, truffles. I know, delicious, right? I'm like, that's all I need is truffle fries, <laughs> because I'll sit there and I'll eat everybody's. So this guy, he's like real snotty, like snotty, okay? And he's like, come back at four thirty. So I get there at four o'clock because I'm that bitch, right? So I'm sitting there, and there's a younger guy at the desk. Now keep in mind. They have all nationalities that work in the Grand Canyon. So sometimes it's people all from like the Congo, people from Africa, people from Mexico, people from Finland, people from China, and they have their accents and they're learning how to speak English. So everybody is a different culture throughout the whole park, which made me think that they were kidnapping people and forcing them into servitude and through work. But I think, because John pointed this out to me, he said, no, it's not that. It's literally that they are um, bringing them in on visas and they're working because the government owns the park. And thank God Roosevelt did that with the park. I will give the government kudos when they can behave properly because they saved that parkland. Or you know these bitches be all up on the edge of the cliff buying the housing and going, look at us, we're special, you can never see the view. So thank God they did. But I think they bring visa people in from all kinds of different countries. That was actually good. That was actually a good thing, right? Um, anyway, Mr. Snobby Maitre D, there's a younger Snobby Maitre D, so probably not even 35. And I had a really hard time understanding. And so I, I tried like six times to get the question answered, it's like six different times, right? And I get a chocolate cone. <laughs> so good. Small, small. I wanted to get a large but I got a small, okay? So anyway, younger maitre d' mafia member guy was nicer, but didn't speak English really. So I was like, okay, he might have been Brazilian. I got the impression he was Brazilian. But anyway, he didn't really speak English. So it took me like six tries. So then I went back outside and then went back inside. And suddenly 
there's 10 people lined up there. And I'm like, oh man, they all snuck in. I was actually the only one in line then turned around and got out of the line. So this girl from Flagstaff and her family members are talking to me and she's, she comes up, she's a darling cute. Little brunette girl dressed super casual, super cute, cute little shoes, cute little family. You know, really, really cute. Um, oh, I'm sorry about that. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, the little girl, she was, she, she was probably, I don't know, she might have been in her 40s. Anyway, she's like, I think you have a better chance of getting in than me. And I'm like, this is a fucking hotel in the Grand Canyon. That dude is like 100 years old. He, he thinks he's Bugsy Siegel. And all I want is fucking salmon. I, so I told her, I said, go get your family. I said, I'll say we're a table for six. <laughs> you can sit with us, right? Instead of a table for two. So I'm like, and you can sit with us, right? I love to eat. I'm going to eat all the time. It's the biggest bane of my existence. Except when I'm being like having an eating disorder, then I don't like to eat. So, aw, Paige's baby's so cute. Baby Caden is so cute. So they had trout there. And they had steak there. Yes, he was mafia maitre d'. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly. So I go up there and there's this really like uptight. So I'm dressed like this. Like I've got workout clothes on, but I'm not dirty. But I'm wearing a cute top and my jean jacket just because. Anyway, but I'm cute. Like my makeup's done and, you know, I'm all cute. And so there's Mr. Uptight New England behind me wearing his Rolex. And I'm like, ah. That just, if you show up like that to me, you, I just, I can't because I just know what I know in my own world. Anyway, so, um, yeah, the eating disorders are terrible. So this doctor guy, cause they addressed him as doctor. So I'm talking and I'm loud as fuck. Right. And I'm like, this guy thinks he's in fucking Vegas. <laughs> and, and so then and like John like slit slit like goes like this to me and then because Mr. Doctor Man's giving us the dirty look and I'm like yes the white trash from California is here and we are hungry ghetto and so anyway we did get a table for two we did eat and so that was really super good yeah <laughs> it was super good <laughs> and yeah, I'm using my lip gloss. So it was totally fun. But we actually got a really good table with a good view. And I kept saying, we are the ghetto. Dr. Man, all proper, walked in. His face, he couldn't even crack a smile. I was, And I was almost determined to make him crack a smile. <laughs> but I didn't. Um, anyway, we ate. Mine was super good. Problem, it was... Salmon something, it did come with guacamole and it was grilled and it was with Spanish rice. I don't really like that, but I wanted the salmon. And they had the best flourless chocolate cake. Yeah, I ate that too. This is why I put on weight. I could not do that. Um, oh yeah, don't. I, I don't have to ask people for readings, honestly. I can't. So those people are fake and they're not me. And I curse them for pretending to be somebody they're not which is not me, okay? I have enough problems being me. They should go get their own life and be whoever they are. But anyway, Mafia Maitre D, <laughs> he was like, and I'm like, so the next day I was just gonna drive back in there and just bug him for the hell of it. Yes, I know, I know. Yeah, because I'm a loser. Yeah, I know, right? Anyway, um, <laughs> that's what we did. I know, wait, I knew it wasn't you. She only has 105 followers. Oh, okay, good. Anyway, so Dairy Queen, no, John and I have come to a good agreement. Everything's been settled. So there is no reason to fight. There's no reason to fight. So there's a pretentious, yes, very pretentious behavior. And he kept going like this. So he's looking down at his book and he's like this. And I'm like, I'm not fucking tipping your ass. I'm not tipping your ass. I'm not giving you money to pay $50 to eat dinner, which it wasn't $50, but I'm still not giving you money. That's your job. Like, I'm not giving you extra to do your job. Like, I'm just not doing it. So it was pretty funny. Um, yeah. My parents, I'm an only child. I have a stepbrother and sister. Both of my parents got remarried. Huh. 
No, I'm not back together. I'm completely single. I am not together with anybody. <laughs> I'm not together with anybody. Honestly, uh, let's see, Sloan. I may or may not have spammed your IG with the cute face dogs. Well, that's okay. I like the cute face dogs. Um, another, wait, where are they pretending to be me? On Facebook or on Instagram? So, yeah, no, I'm completely single, but I will tell you something. I have nothing to say except that I don't like people that try to keep me out of restaurants from eating my salmon because I'm like, no, I'm going to eat my salmon. So there's that. Yeah, no, we're, we get along fine now. It's much better because we don't fight. I agreed to everything he said. <laughs> I gave in and gave, I gave in to everything. So that's it. Um, because I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm not wasting my time doing that. So that's not going to happen. Um, but anyway, it was, it was on Instagram. Yeah. Look at that. Yes. Yeah, Self-harm can be, it can be, I do not like shrimp. Oh God. No, no. Um, yeah, I don't ask for large sums of money like that. I don't, I don't do spinach is so bad full of, yeah, I like spinach, organic, all of that. Um, thank you for that. I don't, um, any psychic, I'm just going to say this, any psychic or anybody that asks you for money to remove a curse is full of shit, full of sh shit. I, mean, I just saw spring rolls. I'm like, oh, I'm hungry again. Anybody who does that is just full of crap. Um, anybody who says that they need this to take a curse off you, they cannot take a curse off you unless they themselves put it on you. What they can do is try to clear your energy, which should have a fee like everybody else's fee, like whatever a doctor charges, whatever a psychic charges, whatever, a, like an hourly charge or a daily charge. It shouldn't be going on. Like you owe me $700 for the next 55 years. Doesn't just an hourly charge. And like your reading is your reading, your tarot card reading, your astrology, whatever it is. I would love chocolate pretzels, but that would be the death of me. Um... No, it's very true. You do not need, and no psychic should be going, do you want a reading for 50 bucks? Like, that's not what psychics do, really. I mean, gypsies do that. Houdini was cool. So, um, yeah, sage is good, but you also have to clean the inside of you. You have to do all of that stuff. Um, so all of that stuff is very interesting, of course, yes. I'm not waiting for anyone to kick the bucket. I hope I kick the bucket first, actually. So just because of your age, don't think for one second because you are a certain age that you're entitled to live a long time in this world because you're not necessarily. Um, meaning, meaning, we I have two children who were under 30 who passed, which is stepson and my son. So they shouldn't have passed. Rose water and salt. Very good. Rose Walter, era Ro Rose Walter. Rose water eradicates anger. Absolutely. So um, yeah, nettle tea has lots of minerals. So good. I'm drinking dandelion tea right now. I'm trying to get back in shape. I am trying. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. I love the prayers. Thank you. Um, everybody... Every single person assumes that because you're a certain age, you're going to live. That's not a good thing to assume because you don't know. It's up to God when you die. It's a butter tarts. <laughs> butter tarts from Canada. Only British, Canadian, and those New England fucks. No offense. The uptight mafia type. You know, those people. Um... Yeah, no, I'm going to get, I'm doing the weights again. That's what I'm saying. Michael, my trainer, that's what I'm doing. I'm not in good shape. I'm in okay shape. I'm not in the shape I should be in. Uh, but I'm training again. My little weak art. Look at, I have this boob fat and this. But anyway, these little spindles I'm training. Oh, he kicked my ass today. He's like, hmm, where have we been? I'm like, yeah, we've been gone. So anyway, um, Without raisins, then the butter tart is good. Yeah, I like the raisins. I'm living for the raisins. I love butter tarts. I must stay away from butter tarts too. Because <laughs> if I find a butter tart, I never met one I didn't like. Yeah, you got. I we got a few months to get in shape. I haven't been able to do my normal run. Cannolis. Oh my God, I fucking love cannolis. Italians, cannolis. 
Oh, cannolis. Yes, cannolis. No, I thought you meant the pastry with the whipped cream on it. Cannolis, right? I'm thinking. Getting those gains. Yeah, exactly. But it's more about being strong, okay? More. Oh, hi, kitties. Crazy cat lady, Joe. Yeah, the kitties. I love them, the kitties. Paige's little baby's so cute. I need to get rid of my bat wings. There's a lady online. She does the bat wing thing like this. Um, you know, you keep going like this and she does like all kinds of things. I was doing her last year, the bat, the bat wing lady. She's like an older woman. She's really cute. She's Australian. She's blonde. She wears cute little outfits and she does like reasonable workouts for people. Um, no, I haven't met Allison. I believe Allison is actually real. Yes. To tell you the truth. So I'm going to say yes to that. So, um, yeah, Jamie Foxx, exactly, attempted it, it, like this, and I think we know who did it. Puffy, Puffy Combs, P. Diddy Combs, orchestrated, that's what I'm thinking. So, I'll be, oh, July 14th is my Jason's birthday, and his baby's due on July 14th. I want french fries now, too. <laughs> oh, God. At the hotel I stayed at? They have a vending machine that has like burritos and chips. So there's me at 11 o'clock at night creeping out to the vending machine. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh my God, I got to stay. <laughs> I got to stay there. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. I tore, oh my God. Uh, yeah, your meniscus, that's hard. Cancer babies, July, yes. Uh, you know what the P stands for in P Diddy? Penis? I don't know what. I'm sorry. I just went to the obvious. I don't know. I just ate French fries. Yeah, see, after this, I'll be out searching, perusing. I call it like, uh, oh, astral projection. We've all done it in our family. Jason, me, Keith, we all do it. So, yeah. Puff butt, P. Diddy. Puff butt. Yeah, he likes it up the butt. Yeah. I'm going to say this again. I'm, I'm a Weight Watchers and all this food talk. I want coffee, ice cream. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh -huh, pedophile. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Puff butt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It goes from food to perversion. I'm going to say this again. I'm, <laughs> I'm a butter tart. Had one the other day. <laughs> Anthony, drop the butter tart now. Happy birthday, you're 50 on whatever day you said. Um, puff butt. No, I I just ate fries. <laughs> um, okay, so smothered tater tots. Yeah, see, I'm just a sucker for all that. I would literally go through drive throughs eating french fries if left to my own devices. Jada was saying Will is gay. I know Will Smith is gay. How do I know this? I know somebody who had sex with him who was a guy. I don't know. If you can say that men are experimenting, here's what I think. Here's what I think. This society is so perverted. And I'm going to say, where can I buy butter tarts? No idea. I've put the butter. I'm I'm off the butter tarts. <laughs> oh, my God. Poutine. Nobody knows what that is in America. That is French fries with gravy on it. And then I would put vinegar. And then I would put ketchup. I don't think it's gay for pay. I think that they... I think, I think that in order to get into this business, Hollywood business, I think, and cheese, oh my God, I'm sure they're all gay. I, there, I don't think there's any men in Hollywood that are straight. None of them. <laughs> I'm sorry to the one that is. So many of these men, and I'm going to say it again, if they're obsessed, with, no, it, you should just be talented, but they're never going to let you. There's many, many talented people. So it's a cult. They're never going to let you get power on earth unless you join their gang. Just look at it like a gang. So just look at it like the Bloods or the Crips. And actually, it's probably more perverse than the Bloods and the Crips because I think the Bloods and the Crips are just pretty straightforward in their gangbanging stuff. But they literally, if you, and, and I will never... Yeah, there's Fabulous 50 Workout Lady, that one, that girl, that lady. I know, poutine, whatever. I'm, you know, I know what it is. Here's what I think. I think that if, they're, if you're going to get, 
I'm a hypocrite to my channel. Me too. I'm going to go out and get fries. No, I'm not. I can't, I can't get up and weigh myself and have the scale go up. I'll go bananas. Um, I think Jay-Z is a demon. I think what's going on is because of the money and power, if you're not incarnating into their group anyway, okay? Okay. John T. Vol I don't even know who that is. If you're, if you're, if you're not in their group, then you're not going to get past the doorway. In other words, you have to do something to prove allegiance, which is such a basic caveman mindset. So that's why so many talented people don't make it. It's because they won't suck dick or bend over. Puffy daddy, P. Diddy, pussy bitch, pussy daddy. Yeah, because you're a girl. Because you're a girl. He's a girl. All right. So anyway... Jay-Z uh, Jay and Beyonce, yeah, they need blackmail in order to do that. John Travolta, absolutely. If Cindy Crawford, I don't, I don't like her eyes. They're hollow. I don't like anything MGK. And they're, if they're in, the, they've all done it with men. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to call that gay or P. Diddy Poo Pusher. Exactly. I don't know if you want to call that gay or just that they're going to do whatever it takes for them to get money. So when you think that money is the ultimate source, if I had money, if I had this, you are looking at money wrong. That's what they're looking at. They have no faith and no belief because they actually believe that without money, that they're nothing. So they can't, they, like, they cheat. It's cheating, okay? It threw the scale out, yeah. That would just lead me down a path I don't want to be on. Um, but I feel... I feel a lot of the entertainers that we see. I just saw a picture. I know. I know what they're doing. It is desecration to God. It is. Um, I'm pretty sure all of them, they're all in the club. They're like, like, if you turn against the mafia guy, gang, these are a bunch of hoodlums. These are a bunch of hoodlums. Now, here's the thing. Somebody like Britney Spears, I actually, John, I don't even know who that is. Uh, he was also Catholic choir boy. <laughs> okay. Anybody in there? I can't. I just can't. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to offend so many people. Those are obsidian. I clean them all the time. Once a week, they get baths in the salt water. That's it. Once a week. My obsidians. And I got the cutest obsidian cat I was in. Um, I was with my friend Arlene and we went and picked up some obsidian. She picked up selenite. I picked up obsidian. Yeah, they hate women over 25 because we are mature and intelligent. And I figured this out. The reason men date younger women is because they think they're going to control them. They think that they're going to adopt all of their stuff. They think that they're going to fall in line. Chop, chop, snap, snap. <laughs> what they don't understand is that's not going to happen. So, yeah, I love Obsidian. I'm totally, when I used to date Roger Rabbit, I'm not sure, I, know, I broke away. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they brainwash. They br Oh, there's Jackie. Jackie, for the love of God. Jackie, thank you so much. Oh, my God. All right, y'all. Jackie, I don't even know what to say. You didn't have to do that. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Jackie is overly gen generous. Red and black and white is demonic. It is. I happen to like red and purple, red and blue, um, all of that. Yeah, Clive Davis. If it's not obvious, I don't know. If you actually think that, <laughs> I just forgot his name. Oh my God. Soundgarden. What the hell? What the hell? Uh, not Chester Bennington. I just, I just literally forgot his name. What is wrong with me? Soundgarden frontman. What the hell is his name? Chris Cornell. Jesus, thank you. It just literally flew out of my head. Chris Cornell. If you think his autopsy, and if people think his autopsy with his head bashed in and his body on the ground from the door handle is him committing suicide, you're dumb as a brick. And if you think that Anthony Bourdain with his name... I mean, his body on the ground at six foot five committed suicide again, dumb as a brick. If you think Chester Bennington committed suicide, dumb as a motherfucking brick. You are dumb. 
mad at me after I kicked him out and called him feral. And I close. I just couldn't read that all. Hi, Dee Dee. How are you? Mm. I have been told over and over. If you think. If you think that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself, you're out of your mind in jail. So if that guy is getting murdered in jail and he's got money and he's got everything, then you're then you're not safe in jail. You're going to die in jail. It's ridiculous. Re Bob Saget, okay, as I said, they did it to him too. It's a gang. They roll up on them, pull out a pistol, and do whatever, whatever it is they do. Hanging. Oh, he committed suicide with a... Wow, really? Oh, he had a medical emergency, Jamie Foxx. No. Jamie Foxx probably trying to get out of the gang. Here's the thing. Once you're jumped into the gang, think of Breaking Bad. Think of... Kate Spade knew they were coming for her. She absolutely knew. She absolutely knew. Yeah, Star Whackers. Star Whackers, exactly. If, if you think you can agree to take the bribe, even if you don't believe there is a devil, and I don't think it's like a eh, little Seinfeld pitchfork devil, but if you think you can take the deal to make money, and just because you don't believe in anything spiritual, you think it's nonsense, and you're just like, yeah, I'll fucking sign this. You are not getting out of the gang. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. They had a 10-year-old roll up on that one drug dealer friend and just put a cap in his head and that's it. So the 10-year-old now can be blackmailed all the way around. Kate Spade was so specifically not suicide. So specifically not suicide. Okay? So specifically. She knew that they were coming. Anna Nicole's juice was spiked. Her orange juice. That's what she showed me. So her or orange juice. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you for that. Her orange juice was spiked. Okay. They'll come to collect. Yes, Jamie Foxx is now going downhill because he dared to open his mouth and tell the truth. But in the, in the eyes of God, that's a much better thing to do, even if you get killed from it. Because you're speaking the truth and you're trying to help people. So no matter what they say, they're full of lies. Okay, Wendy Williams was taken out because she talked about Puff Daddy. Wendy Williams said, Puff Daddy be taking it up the rear end. Don't men understand when they try to shove it up your ass that a woman thinks they're gay? Like, don't men get that? He's probably been cloned. You're probably right. Don't don't men know that? Like they think they're all powerful and strong. <laughs> as soon as you turn me over and try to put it in my rear end, I am going to slap you back because then I think you like asses and that's typically a gay man thing. So then I think you're using me as a woman for your gay man fetish behind my fucking back. So you don't see my face and my boobs. You just see ass. And you like that. That's what I'm going to think, okay? So, like, don't try that with me ever. Um, just a, just an FYI. Um, yeah, as a teenager, that, that, no, seriously. Yeah, that's when I go crazy. As a teenager, that I experienced from somebody who turned to be out, turned, was turning tricks with men, turned out to do that. So, like, when I see that, and they push it in porn like it's normal, kids, Kids in my kids' class were telling me when they were going through school that the girls would have sex up the rear end so they didn't get pregnant. And I'm like, don't do that. You can do that once or whatever, but it's actually, if you talk to people in porn, it causes a lot of damage. So it causes a lot of damage. Right. No, I know that. Right. No, Nobody knows anything at 20. But when I see a guy and he's talking about that and women are like, oh, I love it. I'm like, okay, sure you do. Why? Why do you love that? Because there's really nothing in it for the woman if you're honest. Like if you're honest, there's really nothing in it. It can be okay. But yes, sex binds you to people. Absolutely sex. Nicole Kidman, look up Anthony Kidman. Look up. Child hunting parties. Don't get me started again because we're going to go down that road again. Um, next, 
<laughs> Princess Diana. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Diana, oh my God. I'm sure they are possessed. They're high witches. So understand when you allow, okay, let's look at it this way. Let's look at the entertainment. Oh, I gotta take this off. Headache time. I just got a fucking headache from my own sunglasses. Okay. So I mean, look at you guys. I just, it's like I rolled out of the, let's try these pink glasses. Maybe they're not as tight on my head. Nope, they're tighter. Okay, so I grew up in Toronto and I encountered that as a teenager from men. So Willie Lopez, yes, fucking Willie Lopez. They sucked Willie Lopez into the ground. I know who Willie Lopez is. Y'all ghost. Anyway, um, I'm having a hot flash now. Look at my ears. Hot flash, menopause, hot flash. Okay. Um, yes. Anyway, <laughs> I know. Um, so they try, let's look at it this way. Let's look at it. If you're having sex, let's say you trust a man and you let that man do anything to your body. So the man says, I'm going to choke you during sex, which I understand people do it, but that's my phobia. So keep your hands away from my neck. You will not be choking me just so we're very fucking clear. It's not going to happen because I don't trust anybody enough to let them put their hands around my neck because I know, okay? <laughs> because I know they're gonna fucking choke me and not, not let go. I think it's happened in a past life. I just can't go there. Um, mm. But here's the thing. No, that's all over the porn. That's what they do. Survival tips. Don't let these bitches choke you. <laughs> Fucking choke me. <laughs> Back it up, buddy. But let's say you let a man do that. Okay, so I just want you, or a woman, whatever, if you're a man. So let's say you trust them enough. You let them do that, right? Yeah, I have a neck. I can't. I just can't. So, do, no, all witches don't go to hell. Oh, mm. I don't know what you mean by which. If you mean black magician, then it's not a good thing. And I don't even know that they go to hell. Witchcraft is utilization of energy and not necessarily the way it's posed. They call people witches and really what they're doing, it depends what your intention is. That's, that's what I could say. But let's say... I, I've been choked by family members, not for sexual purposes. They're just trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the family I grew up in. They're just trying to fucking kill me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, they have a fetish, but, but, but it's a dangerous thing because you can crush a windpipe. And when people are in the middle of like an orgasm, they could hurt you. So let's just pretend you trust somebody enough to do that. Okay. And you give them permission to do whatever to you in any part of your body, any orifice, because let's say you're married to them and you trust them, male or female, whatever. Once you let them have that control over your body, okay, and you cannot fight back, then they can enter your body in any way and you don't have the control. Once they choke you and you lose consciousness, you have no control. Once they're behind you, especially if they're a man and you're a female, they can overwhelm you and they can hurt you, okay? And you have no control. Now, let's look at it in a demonic sense. So remove the sexual aspect of it and go into the entertainment industry when they say, yes, I believe in your deal, your contract. I will sign your contract because I don't really think you're going to do anything to me because why? Okay, I don't think golden shower is actually harmful. <laughs> it's gross, but it's not harmful. So let's, say, well, I mean, there's someone peeing on you, okay? I mean, ew, but it's not going to kill you. I mean, it might disturb your brain a bit, but I don't think it's going to kill you. Um, but anyway, if you allow somebody to sign a contract with you, Okay, if you allow them to sign that contract, so you give them trust, it's a business deal to you and you're like, they're weird. They want me to sign a contract into perpetuity, which by the way, I have signed contracts like that. The entertainment business has you sign contracts into perpetuity. I have also amended them 
thanks to John, okay, thanks to him, because he said, of course Goldie Hawn is. They have said, no, I've amended them. I haven't done the job. Because John said, into perpetuity means they can use your physical likeness even after you're dead, which is why they have a whole bunch of lawyers that pimp out dead celebrities whose families don't tie up their name and likeness through contractual agreements before the celebrity dies. Anyway, or entertainer or whatever you want to call them. So when you open, just like in a sex act, if you're going to allow a person to do whatever they want to you, when you sign a contract knowingly, like in order to go forward, to be, to be, <laughs> Dakota, you're hilarious. In order to go forward in the entertainment industry, win an Oscar, win an Emmy, all of that. When you sign that knowingly, and thank you, Kathleen, and you follow that line of thought, you have now opened yourself up. But here's the important thing. The demonic entities on earth, okay, the demonic entities understand that they can jump into your physical, physical, and control you. So somebody like Beyonce, Bigfoot, yes. Somebody like Beyonce, right, is so famous that, and Britney, so famous and Kardashian that you don't really know whom you are speaking with in the physical sense because the entities pop in and out. When they say that you're born into a world of sin, what the, what I used to think, and I never went to church, as I said, but what I used to, I, that never made sense to me because I'm like, if you're a fucking baby, you're not born into a world of sin. However, Yes, exactly. The green actor mile, the actor in the green mile. However, when you are born onto this planet or kidnapped down here or lied to about reincarnating here, however you want to word it, you are born into sin because there's nothing but sin here through demonic entities that want to take over the physical body. So once you let them energetically know that they could come into your body, they will come into your body. I'm not talking sexually. I'm talking spiritually. They will come into your body. Once they come into your body, once they come into your body, you are then fucked because how do you get them out? First, they come in for a minute and they just like the, the boyfriend that chokes you for a second. He <laughs> comes in. He does a light choke. It's okay. He's really hot. You know, whatever. You let it go by. The next time he chokes you, you're struggling to catch your breath. The third time he chokes you, you're unconscious. Same with the spirit. You're pushed right out, a.k.a. Britney Spears. I actually, cord cutting doesn't work unless you pull out the root. And I don't actually believe that you can pull out everything. And once you, once you, um, once you agree to it, you're, even if you don't believe it, once you accept what's going on, once you go to one of their parties and you partake in it, you now, okay, yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, Nick. That's your choice, but it's not a good choice. Um, they get a hell lot of plastic surgery to hide their clones. That's why Michael Jackson looks so fucking insane. Nobody's doing all those nose jobs to him. Nobody's doing all those nose jobs, right? So drugs and alcohol open you up. So what you need to do is you need to understand that if you're going to make that deal, you're going to have all the money and fame you want. But every single time you have, yeah, exactly. Every single time, well, not quite crazy cat lady, Joe, because sometimes the demons put their babies into bloodlines that reincarnate in and in and in and in. You see what I'm saying? So like a demon baby can be born into a bloodline of demons and raised by them in physical disguise in the physical, if that, if that makes sense. Of course, your cat's going to go to heaven because cats are healers. Yes. Handlers and groomers. Exactly. No, some babies come into this world. Some babies are reincarnated demonic energies born in baby form part of what's of this earth not of what's of the spiritual because 
they have been captured lifetime after lifetime. The only thing you have to remember is don't be afraid to die. So always speak up for what you want. Don't be afraid to die. Don't be afraid to, that says sunflower. Um, don't be afraid to die. Never back down. Even if somebody points a gun in your face, don't back down. Speak your mind and then run like hell. But don't let them scare you. They tried to take your sense of security and make you afraid of death. Um, it's not what they tell you, okay? It's, I, I want to die in a new town. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> not funny. Um, but could a good person, yes, a good person can. Because remember, God's children come here and the other, the beast system comes here. So it is a spiritual war. So how could they take out one of God's, give them a demon child? That's how they can do it. Or somebody that struggles with it. It doesn't matter. Somebody asked how you get out of, um, yeah, I won't, I won't back down. You can fucking do whatever. I'm not backing down. So I don't care what you say. I don't, let's see. Yes, they use, I know, I've said that. They use sodomy in order to access the higher levels of the chakra systems and to put spores, I'll use the word spores, like when you blow a dandelion and the little spores fly, they use sodomy or anal sex in order to hook into the higher energies of the chakra system and therefore open up a path to hide behind your energy because they themselves don't. So they steal it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for that. I never know the correct words. I never know the correct words. And you have to understand in some people's families, they have, what about, oh, well, when you die, you're more alive over there than you are here. Yes, energy vampires are 100% real. These are people with nothing to offer you who kind of come in and connect to your energy. And some people, yeah, I well, okay, Jesus is queen, you're funny. Jesus is an energy, is a healing master, but... Yes, exactly. Um, you have to understand that if you want money so badly, badly, like look at these people. Look at them in the entertainment industry. I want you to look at them in the entertainment industry. Oh my God, it's time for the Oscars for us to give ourselves awards so we can sit there like little gods and collect these awards for being the best at the shit that we pay off, cheat, and do. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your Oscar, your Grammy, your Emmy. Nobody cares because it's all choreographed in order to indoctrinate people. It's not, why would you want an award from a group of people that give themselves awards? That's not an award. That's not a fucking award. Yes, they do, they do invert it. Look at, um, what's her name? Kate Winslet right now. They, they invert at birth. And here's the problem with inversion at birth. The problem is if you idealize it because you don't know it, which a lot of us didn't know it, but if you idealize the inversion, if you're giving a child hormones at birth, they can never go back. They can never go back. In other words, you're fucking their physical body up forever. That's why and Jamie Lee Curtis was a hermaphrodite. Um, so they can't go back. Like it's hormones is a, I know what it is. It's Luciferian. It's Freemason. It's whatever. And I'm going to say it again. Yes. Ricky Gervais. Yes. He said it out loud, but he's also one of them or he wouldn't be there. Okay. He would not be there. So that's, that's, um, hidden in plain sight. Them telling you what it is. It is abuse. It is. Meghan Markle, I don't know what she is. I don't ever pay attention to that woman. But it is abuse. It, it It is a form of abuse. But they are indoctrinating and it is a spiritual war. So if they continue to take God's children and lure them in with the love of money, right? If they lure them in with the love of money where they think money is important, Money, yes, exactly. Ricky Gervais is one of them, okay? He is one of them. That's, I mean, that's obvious. Just because he's speaking the truth 
doesn't mean he's speaking the truth for the reason that you think he's speaking the truth. So he's controlled opposition because so many people are coming out with it. Now he's going to chop, chop all of the people in the industry as a way of shaming them publicly while making light of it while telling the truth. You see, this is like dog whistling in the narcissistic community mumbo jumbo talk which these people actually believe, these people actually believe that they're relevant because they did a fucking fake movie that they didn't even write themselves. They didn't come up with a character. They didn't do any of that. They pretended, wore a mask and pretended. They can't be themselves because they are not themselves. So if they cannot be themselves, they have to be fake over here. There's no talent in acting, it's crap. When you actually, yes, all of them. Yes, actually all of them. Actually all of them. Of course he's making bank. They all think the money's important. They think the money's important. Uh, what's with, I know. Well, the older rockers are so greedy they don't want to stop doing their work and making their money because they think they're immortal because that's the trick that they tell them. When you sell out, they tell you, Kobe Bryant, taking his, um, daughter with him in that the two that died which is horrible for the wife but yeah Ricky is an atheist that's a you can be atheist I was raised by an atheist I know all about it it doesn't bother me you either know God or you don't I can't help it if you don't you'll find out sooner or later I don't know what to say it's your it's your thing my dad was an atheist my dad told me there was no God after my dad crossed over he came back through my son and said there is a God so I mean, that's a direct message from my father. So I don't know what to say. The man said there was no God. Didn't care about shit like that. Um, so I don't know. Jason was 13. That's a message he gave me. That's, there is a God. I always knew there was a God. You don't, you're not, you're not going to threaten me. You can go be a Satanist. I have friends that are Satanists. That's their fucking choice. They may think I don't know. I know. That's their choice. You get to choose, so choose. But you're not going to stop me from speaking what I want. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I'm going to do what I want. You're not more important than me. And I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. There's a lot of devil worshipers in the community, in the psychic community, in the entertainment community, and they call it under different names. If you want to look at Mormonism, that's pretty demonic. Don't yell at me if you're Mormon. I believe you come at it from a good position. It's also your intention, okay? It's also your intention. You can do whatever you want, but I'm not backing down and you're not going to mock me because I like God. So keep that clear. Um, yeah, there, well, I know a lot that believe in God. The reason that a lot of gay people and trans people and bisexual and LGBTQ, all of them, community has a rejection of God at times in their life is through religion. But religion is man-made and they lie to you in religion. So when they lie to you in religion, you're going to hate religion and not like God because you're being told that God is saying that you are bad. But if God created you, then you're not bad, right? So the religion is the lie, not the not the gay people. It's the religion that's a lie. I don't choose. I'm fence sitting. Sit, wait, I'm fence sitting. Sit. I didn't get that. Anyway, it's the religion. Like your Catholic religion, you can't be gay. They're nothing but gay. Okay, and they're not even gay. They're abusive. Mm. So good for you, Cynthia. Good for you. So when. You've got a society that believes in religion, which whatever it is, look at what they do to women in the Middle East. They actually think that 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 Allah writes a book, Islam, and says, you got to cover your women. You own your women. Do you really think God said that? Do you really think the creator of this world said to the people that bring all the people here through the womb that you own them? Who fucking wrote that? What guy wrote that? What man wrote that bullshit, okay? Bullshit. What man wrote that? Said nobody ever, okay? That, I mean, please, cover your women. Fuck off with that. Cover your man. Whatever a man can do, a woman can do, and a woman, not necessarily physically, but there should be no difference. The difference is women bring through 
human beings through their womb, which adds strength to a woman, okay? Which adds strength to a woman. So that is what they do in the name of Jesus, amen. If you believe these religions that say, I'm sorry, Mormon, that say you give up your job, you stay home, you have sister wives, you fuck the mother and fuck the daughter because you call them wives, please, that's an abomination. And if you can't see that, I don't care. I don't care. It's an abomination. If I'm offending you, I'm just going to ask you to take a look at that. That's a fucking joke, right? You should fuck a mother and a daughter. You are sick. How dare you? That's incest and it's completely wrong, okay? You don't do that. I don't care what you say. You just don't. You don't touch my child if you touch me. If you touch my child and you touch me, you're going to end up dead. That's what's going to happen. So I think Britney Spears, right at this time, I think Britney Spears has literally been like the tigers in... Um, now I forgot the name of the movie. Oh my God, Gladiator. I think Britney Spears has been removed like in the movie Gladi Gladiator with the Tigers. I think they draw her in. So AI, hologram, I don't know what they do. Any of that. That's what I think. She's definitely trapped spiritually. They capture consciousness. This I've been told. So they capture consciousness and they use the consciousness of the former person and they steal it okay yes i did i did go to the grand canyon absolutely i did i ran it from rim to rim and back um absolutely i did so they do that and it's uh, there are different types of mormon religion i don't think any religion on this planet is a religion i think that man has butchered every catholic christian Baptist, name a religion, Scientology, all of that, okay? All of it. I literally feel like man has done that. Yes, Brittany was a prostitute for everybody in the industry, and everybody knows that. So the more that you give these people credit, like your Madonnas, like um, I haven't seen angels on my hike. I heard voices this weekend, though. <laughs> I heard voices. Um, yeah, I, I heard somebody say, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, they are born into it, but we are in a spiritual war right now and they can no longer hide behind our energy. So when they used to say their, their good deeds outweigh their bad, they said this because they think that if you rape a few children, sell them, traffic, but give to philanthropy, then you'll be seen as good. I think you're a piece of shit. As soon as I hear the word philanthropist beside you, I think you're a child trafficking fucking pedo, okay? That's what I think. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't like it. Um, yeah, the poor Grand Canyon horses, they're little work horses. They have four legs though. I don't think they like it. They're in slavery. But I feel, I, I just feel that their good, we, good deeds do not outweigh their bad deeds because they're doing their bad deeds in order to gain chrome and all kinds of things. That's what they're doing. And they hide behind our energy so they give the appearance. It's an energetic cloaking. So when, exactly, when, when you say somebody has, anal sex to tap into the chakra system in order to harness your energy, that is one way to do it, okay? Is they can come in, they can control you like this. They control you astrally because they put stuff into your body through their body stuff. Be very, very, very fucking careful with what you let into your body. They're trying to get us through food. They're trying to get us through everything. But they can't. I don't care what they do. You do what you do. I'm still going to pray to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Period. End of conversation with that. Um, I quit going. See, Lori, you understand it. You probably, I mean, 
it's male, it's human man. But in any religion where women are of servitude to serve men, that's not a religion. We're very powerful. We give birth. We're not here to serve men. That's not what we're here to do. That's not our bane of existence. Oh, oh, women are the nurturers. No, sometimes we're the hunters and gatherers. Sometimes we do better than the men. Sometimes we're fucking strong as shit and you can't take us down. So every religion says women got to be in the background in, you know, because of the men. No, 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 no. Bullshit. Okay bullshit. And then they try to tell you that if you act like a man, this is the bullshit on dating in this thing. If you act like a man and you do like a man, then men aren't going to like you because you're too strong, too bad, too bad, too fucking bad. Okay. Too bad. Cause if I'm stronger and I can make more money than you or whatever it is, if I'm a woman, then that's just what that is. Then you have something else to offer. So offer that and stop trying to put me in a traditional role where I'm to be of service with you through religious guilt and shame. What the hell are you talking about? I don't think so. <laughs> mm -mm. I know I'm not here for them. We're, we're actually here to bring souls through. We are creators. We create children. There's nothing more powerful. A man can't do that. He can help with that. And I think it's very important. But there is nothing. They don't have the strength that we have. So that's just the way that that is. I mean, I'm sorry. I know. Tell them to cook your deal. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Tony Otoki seems... Tony... Tony... Tokyo Tony seems like a narcissist to me. She's not wrong in what she's saying. Happy Mother's Day, Kathleen and Jackie. I'm thinking of Jackie. I want, if Jesus was a Jew, doesn't that make us all Jewish? Sure, makes us all Jewish if Jesus was a Jew. If we all came through that way, absolutely. I don't know. I absolutely know Jesus was Jewish because that's where he was born and that's what was happening. So when you see blonde, blue-eyed Jesus, again, a concoction made up by man or humans. Concoction, nonsense. Oh, what is this like blonde, blue eyed? Yeah, sure. Walking through the Middle East, of course, unless, unless, and you, I go back to the teachings of Dr. Bruce Goldberg, unless Jesus or what they claim was Jesus was actually an alien because there is a certain group of aliens that come through blonde, blue eyed, but they're not human. Okay, so if you look at that line of thinking, because Jesus was a light worker, but I don't think that. I think Jesus was Jewish, was born in the Middle East, and I think he came through looking like that. Olive skin, dark hair, dark eyes. I'm sure he had the long flowing hair. I just don't think it was pale, freckled, nor do I think he was black. I think he was Middle Eastern. <laughs> That's what I think, okay? That's what I think. I do know who Tokyo Tony is. Yeah, I think she's a narcissist, but she's not wrong. And she, Black China is making a complete move the other way, which is a good thing. But I still think she's going to end up in the detriment because she was sold out, obviously. Okay, and it's fine. You can spend lifetimes being sold out if you want. If you want, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm sure. G I, I, I don't know what, yeah, let's see. No such thing as aliens. They say there's no such thing as aliens, but let me just say another entity, a Spanish or Mexican name, right? Jesus, I know. Used to crack me up. <laughs> Jesus. <coughs> I called him Jesus. Um, let's see. I agree with the picture. And if Jesus, uh, well, I think that he was Middle Eastern. They say where he came from. And I don't know if Jesus was circumcised. He was in a physical body to live a physical life in order to be a light worker, a highly evolved energetic being, okay, like Buddha, Allah, Jesus, all in the same lines, okay, all in the same lines. However, he came to this corrupted shithole of a beast hole of a fucktard planet with a bunch of demonic fucks running it. And of course, they strung him up and they killed him because that's what happens. If you speak the truth, you will be murdered on this planet. That's what's going to happen. 
that's what ha that's what's going to happen. So it is kind of problematic, right? I think we are aliens. I think we've literally been hijacked. Exactly. No, I haven't seen Jesus. He wasn't crucified. I don't know if he was or not. I'm just going on what they say. I don't look into it and I don't read know anything about the Bible. I just know what people tell me about the Bible. And about the Quran and all of these. But what I do know is if you actually fucking think that any religious entity that's full of love and light said you own your woman and blamed women for everything. Adam and Eve. Oh, that bitch Eve ate the apple. Fuck off with that. Because Adam was probably going, you do it first because he was such a fucking coward. Okay. That's probably what happened. But they blame everything on women. It's always the woman's fault. It's always the woman's fault. No, it's not. <laughs> Good for you, Dave. Yeah, I have not read it. Um, I don't know why. I don't have an interest in reading it. I mean, I guess one day I will, but I have not read it. Um, nor do I pretend to read it. But what I do know is they say that Eve ate the apple. Now, let's extend that to, I know, all religions are against women, honestly. Not safe for your daughters. If, you, if, you, if a woman commits adultery in the Middle East, she will be killed what about the dude that fucked her? How come that guy gets off scot-free? How come we applaud him and kill her? What is that? What is that? What the fuck is that? Yeah, it ain't okay. Yeah, I know. In all fairness, it usually isn't my fault. <laughs> I'm with you. Apple phone logo, I know. I know, and I love my Apple phone. However, however, when I look at it like this, the way that I look at it is the snake that entices them in the garden is representative of the beast system. And the beast system is what will tempt you. Money, Ferraris, cars, hookers, hoes, booze, crack, meth, weed. Weed is terrible for you. It throws you onto the astral level. Once you're out of body on the astral level, they can control your energy. People, weed is not good. Oh, weed is an herb. Yeah, no one said it isn't. Cocaine is a coca leaf in its pure form. If it throws you out of your body, then there's a problem. I know. Adam and Eve is just a story. Duh. Hello. Ask yourself why they base a religion. Okay. Please think outside of the box. Why do they base a religion on a story that implies that the fucking woman is at fault for biting the apple? Ask yourself that. Yes, I know it's a story. Okay, it's all a fucking story written by man. But ask yourself. Think about it in your head. Don't just go, it's a story. What's the purpose of the story? How does the story indoctrinate you and make you hate women because this bitch ate the apple? Why do we need to know that in this story? Okay, I know. I know. I know. I got you. But why do we need to know it? Why is every religious narrative about a woman who fucks up, a scarlet letter, a slutty woman, a this. A woman must serve her man. She must stand behind. She must be smacked out if she has sex with another man. But your man can do it. Do you really think that the stories are not trying to control you? Oh, woman, back in the day, if you're in the Catholic church, right? I know, I'm not saying that men don't. I'm saying whoever wrote these Bibles or these religions. Back in the day in the Catholic church, if you were taking birth control, you had to sit down, but your man didn't. Why do you think the woman is taking the birth control? Because the guy with the hard dick is trying to fuck her and she doesn't want to have 15 kids. That's why. But who has to sit down and shame in the church? The woman, right? What's that? What's that about? Yeah. What's that about? Right? And then, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. And then they're like, the snake, which is the beast system, entices the Jezebel. There is a Jezebel spirit. There are people that use their body for fucking everything. True. Very true. I'll tell you what they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, pomegranate, apple, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if it was an orange. I don't care if it was a Snickers bar. You get the point. You get the point. 
<laughs> the point is every single religion focuses on a woman that is fucking bad. The woman, okay? The woman does this. The woman does that. The woman does this, that, and the other. What is that about? It's not the woman. I know. I know the story was... I know. That's my point. <laughs> Hi, kittens. That's my point. Are you drinking semen? I fucking hope not. I don't usually do that. Why do you? Do you do that? You're the one that does. I mean, I don't care what's in the Bible. That's what I'm saying. I don't believe it. Because if we all drop dead in a nuclear war right now, right now, and the only book left alive was Scientology, you'd be calling that the Bible and listening to that shit. <laughs> So no, I don't know what it is. I'm not saying it doesn't have, I just, I just know. Yeah, can't, yeah, everything about the period not being clean. Please, please. Men are jealous. Men are jealous because we have kids and they can't do that. They can't do it. They can't do it. So they write a book that makes us seem like we're the weirdos. Yeah, JF, RFK's voice Michael J. Fox, they've all been put together like the the um, Star Trek episode where they put the human bodies back in a certain way and then they show you them really and they're all out of whack like that. Um, they're just trying to throw, you can't throw me off again and I will repeat this. My son died. Nothing you say to hear uh, to me bothers me at all, okay? I've been through the worst. There's nothing you can say or do to me that's ever going to make me fucking do anything, okay? It, like, I don't care. I don't care. You can call me whatever you want. I don't care. Go away or stay. I don't fucking care. They're going to ask that. Anyway, um... Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to me that's actually going to hurt me? Nothing. Nothing. You're not going to do shit to me because I don't care. So I've been given the gift of completely, I don't give a fuck. I don't care if you try to sue me. I don't care if you try to kill me. I don't care if you take my money. I don't care if you take me. I don't care if you take my car. I don't care. So stop writing stupid shit because I don't care. You will never affect me, ever. So, I, I mean, <laughs> whatever, um, exactly. Because you know, <laughs> I don't care. Um, I do not care. Ask me anything you want. I'll tell you, I do not drink semen. Do you? I mean, I don't know how you want me to answer that. <laughs> I don't care. Um, yeah, no, I know there's so many mothers that go through what I go through and none of them care. Because you can't, what's the worst thing that can happen to a person on this earth? You can't make me, af yeah, yeah, no, I'm not afraid of, I wasn't afraid before, I'm definitely not afraid now. I don't, I've, I I almost got shot after Keith's funeral, I told you that, I got in the middle of a shooting LA street in my neighborhood fire, shooting fire. Guy was actually pointing, I stopped in the middle of the street as the gunfire went over my head. Okay, if you shoot me and kill me, I'm off the planet. So you're doing me a favor. So that's a plus in my books. Always a challenge. Um, anyway, yeah, semen free drinking. I just don't know what to say. I have to answer like that because like it's so petty what you do when you do that. It's like stupid. Anyway, my point is, I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna do this summer, that, which you all know, which you all know. They're going to turn the dollar um, yeah, no, I don't pick, I'm not saying a, somebody I knew shot at me. I'm saying in my neighborhood, they were having a gunfight. So I live in Los Angeles. It's pretty common. Um, you know, I live in the Valley, the San Fernando Valley. Pretty much a lot of shootings gone there. It just happened to be, it was just with the people across the street. And I was like, what the hell? Um, they're going to turn our cash into digital. Excuse me. If people don't start standing up and rebuffing the government, rejecting what they're saying, and literally going to the bank and phoning them up night and day, talking to your Congress people, which I say fuck the government, but you have to do something, that's the first thing they're going to do, okay? They're going to take away our ability to spend money without it being detected on what we do. So if you do buy things illegally, you won't be able to write stuff off like you could write 
now, right? And so they're going to block it that way. Then the next thing, and hear me very fucking clearly about this. I have been preaching sobriety my entire life. Well, not until like when I was 420, I, I like the LSD and the drugs, not going to lie. Um, but after that, because I knew the government wanted us on drugs. Okay, that's why they push pharmaceuticals. They push fast food to make you fat, to give you diabetes. They push alcohol to keep you high, to get into your body. But here's what they're going to do. They are going to literally take away alcohol, weed, fentanyl. So when you have a surgery, they're going to take away your ability to get a painkiller because that will also control you. If you are already sober at the time that they do this, you will be able to use your right mind to think. You will not be coerced or bullied into doing, signing, or accepting something, okay, because you're high and you need a fix. So keep that in mind. Learn detachment, people. Learn detachment. Learn detachment. Be detached. Literally, hold no alignment with any money, any anything, not your bleach, not your Botox, not your boobies, whatever it is you want, not your coffee. Learn how to detach for ev from everything because if you want it, they will take it away. Now, I'm basically, let's see, found her murdered daughter on the other side and I missed that. Um, so that is what they are planning. So when you look at it, that, it, yeah, learn how to be sober. In three weeks, knee and bone on bone. Oh my God, I'm very disabled and pain daily. Oh my God, honey. You've got to get that fixed. You've got to get that fixed. Light another cigarette and learn to forget. Yeah, well, don't light another cigarette. <laughs> Stop smoking. But anything that you attach to, they will take it from you because then they can control you. That's why we have a society where they actually go to the doctor every four months to check on themselves, like take care of your fucking self. But they teach you not to. They teach you that it's normal when you're 60. Oh, you need to do this. You need, Why? Oh, you have to take hormones. Why? Oh, you have to, why? Why? Tell me why. Because you can make money off me? I don't want you making money off me. Yeah, vape down to the vape, then get rid of the vape. It's the only... Yeah, don't let anyone know you. Yeah, put cigarettes down and look look around. Yeah, no, seriously, that's what they want. Mark my words. They will get rid of what you like. We think wine. You go into a store, and I'm glad you're sober now. I'm so glad you're sober. We go into a store. We think wine is always going to be on the shelf. Oh, look, wine. Better off not to attach to wine. Don't attach to wine because they're going to pull it from the shelves. This is going to be like a three-year thing, but this is what they're going to do. So they want us, got addicted. Of course, they want you to be addicted. That I, I knew that as a kid. I literally said that out loud as a young child under the age of 10. I literally said the government sells the alcohol, the Coke, the crack, the whatever. I knew that. I knew it. Nobody else wants it because we... We have such power when we're sober because we can see it. You cannot hurt sober people. They will feel everything, but they can still act from strength because it's not diluted strength. When you're high, you don't see things the same way. You see them from a from a, a, a different lens. And so you don't have the power you have. You think you have the power you have, but you don't. And then they get you into a certain line of thinking because your vibration is lowered. The way to the only way this is what this is the information I have. I don't know if it's right because I'm not dead and I can't remember being dead. But the only way to raise yourself up vibrationally is to be of service to others. So I do not care how you're of service. If you can help a neighbor, if you can help somebody's pet, if you can help their child, if you can help the girl at the store, say a nice thing to somebody in line. What it open a door for somebody, which you should be doing anyway, but whatever it is you can do to help other people, you will raise your vibration. The more self-focused you are, which I was for many years, I wanted to be in entertainment, all of that shit. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. 
because I was taught that money was important and I came from a very wealthy family, the adopted family. So all they talked about was money and you have to have money and money's important. Well, fuck that, okay? I did have to support myself. You do have to support yourself here. But the most important thing is to be of service, not to go after just what you want, but to be of service. So every time you do something for yourself, do for another. This raises the vibration and allows you to get out of the reincarnation cycle. So I'm told. Do I know for sure? I don't know. Good for you. Well, you'll get out of the vaping. You'll get out of the, just, just help other people. Whatever you can do. Whatever you can do to help another person. That is all you are here to do. You are not here just to focus on yourself, to make the most money you can, to talk about the money that you have in order to blah, blah, blah. Be of service. Even if you don't have money, you can walk someone's dog. You can take them an apple. You can send them a flower. You can write them a card. You can call them. You can do so much. Thank you so much, Lynn, for that. You can do whatever you want. You can rake somebody's yard. These are, I'm having a hot flash. Look at my ears. Literally, my ears go bright red when I'm having a hot flash. And this gets all red. Hot flash, y'all. <laughs> hot flash. Sorry, it's gross, but it's true. Volunteer. Do whatever you, is. do what, sandalwood, I'll try it. Do See, look, all red through here. It's like literally like I've been running and I'm sweating. I'm on fire, y'all. Um, I got to go back to my acupuncture. Power surge, yeah. My ears do that when people talk about me. Well, I'm probably being talked about right now, usually family members. But be of service because to be of service, okay, to be of service is going to raise your vibration. So when you are of service, you raise it so you're out of that reincarnation cycle. So yeah, I'm definitely hot. Hot flash probably cold out, but I'm hot flashing it. So be of service, help and be of service. I think it's extremely, they're very good in the winter, said cocaine ruined his brain. Cocaine short circuits your brain. You lose the dopamine in your brain. Look at the trick of that drug. Meth, cocaine, speed, diet pills, whatever. Okay. Mm. Look what it does. It takes the quickest route to bring you a dopamine hit and then it eradicates the dopamine out of your fucking brain so you can never feel happiness again. If that ain't the beast system, it keeps you awake, you get a lot done, you're able to make money because you stay awake a lot and I'm hot flashing big time. You're allowed to, you, you do all of these things, right? Cocaine bear, exactly. But if the bear actually, anyway... It, what I'm saying is it depletes the dopamine in your brain. You can't make your own dopamine yourself, which means you can't be happy yourself. You need the cocaine. So your brain's like, this is the only thing that makes me happy. What the hell? That's, a, that's they don't teach kids that. That's playing with fire. I don't give a fuck if you do cocaine. I come, obviously, my stepson died of it. John was on it. Everybody in our family did it. I did it once in my life. Nothing happened. It's just not a good thing to do. They don't really tell you what it does to your mind. Yes, it's a total trap. Look at heroin. People can't stop and they don't even want to do it. They don't want to be stared at like that and they can't stop. It's terrible. 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 Don't do it. Know that the government wants you to do it. Yeah. I know no one in my family is in recovery, but they definitely have brain damage from it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like the cocaine fucked your head up. You talk like a moron. So it just, it's, it is a heart attack. This is what my stepson died of. He literally had a heart attack and died and dropped dead. Beautiful man. That beautiful man. Where is he? Wherever he is over there, over there. Right there, right there, right there. Beautiful man, the cocaine. He thought, oh, nothing's gonna happen. And I'm gonna say this again. If you do cocaine for a lot, yes, a lot of people with brain damage without any drugs, absolutely. If you 
I knew someone that got cancer from drinking too many stimulant drinks like Red Bull and whatever. They drank so many, they ended up with brain cancer because it grew everything. Mesa, I was just in Arizona. Um, what happens is if you do cocaine or heroin for years and you take large amounts and you don't die, that's good. If you, mental illness is a spiritual problem. It's not mental illness the way that you think it is. It's spiritually based. Meaning there's a etheric break in the soul body. Once you fix that, you're not going to have what they call mental illness. Perhaps your mental illness is not a mental illness. Perhaps society tells you it's a mental illness because they don't want you to know the truth. Perhaps the schizophrenics hearing voices are hearing voices because they can see the other side and they are told that they are crazy when they're not. Maybe that's it, okay? Oh, wait, is another person in here named Sloan but a man? Yeah, mine's the male spelling. Um, mine's the, my name's the male spelling. Anyway, my point is, what is my fucking point? I had a point. I don't know the point, but that's what they're going to do. Um, that's what they're going to do. So don't let them do it to you. Anything that I went by. Yes, I went. I got a picture. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're so, Sandra. I'm sorry. The voices. But see, the voices, what I really feel about schizophrenia, and I'm being 100% dead serious here. Dead serious. Okay. Schizophrenia is some kind of an open doorway to where they can hear. If, if you, a lot of us are lucky we don't hear voices. And I know psychics that hear voices continually. And they hear voices continually because the, the energies of entities outside of the physical body actually will scream at us and talk to us and do all kinds of shit to us to make us feel horrible. They love to do that. I believe that schizophrenics can't sh or don't have that layer to block them from that. So OCD, well, OCD, yeah, OCD can be a form of that. It can if they tell you that. I know I'm so sorry, Sandra. So sorry. Um, I don't know what that means. But yeah, I had OCD for a long time. I wouldn't eat any. Well, you know, I have my eating disorder. So I had OCD around food. Um, possessed, but the entities come into them and they, they're missing something. So it's a spiritual premise. I actually believe that. So I think it can be cured, but I don't think they approach it. I mean, some medicines work, but I don't think they approach it. Okay. I don't, I have, yeah, I have the OCD I had was hilarious. It was when I look back at my OCD, oh my God, fucking hilarious. I mean, I went three years without eating solid food. John and I were just talking about that. We traveled all over Canada, Las Vegas, and I would order my dinner and he would blend it for me and I would eat it like a soup. Seriously, because I couldn't swallow. If anything went in my throat, I went fucking bananas, bananas, <laughs> bananas. I stopped chewing food. I stopped doing all of that. You know what I'm saying? So that was my OCD. And my OCD told me not to leave the house. So I was agoraphobic. And my OCD would scream at me that I was ugly and I was stupid and I had body dysmorphia. I had all of those things. So I wasn't afraid of the germs. I'm afraid of the germs now. <laughs> and it's not OCD. I just look on the streets in LA. But yeah, I had a, I had a lot of that. A lot of that. Um, like a lot. Very, very, very weird OCD. Usually, And I started around the age of four for me. I had it around food. So my food's always been blended, 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 like in a blender. Put salmon in a blender with potatoes and spinach and eat it as a soup. Um, my kid, Jason, would tell you he had to sit with me on the floor because when he was little, he could calm me down. And I'd be so out of whack, so out of whack that I would just carry baby food in my purse. Like I was starving myself to death and could not eat, could not. I'll tell you what I did. For I had it for 13 years, really bad, really, really bad, okay? Really, really, really bad, like crazy bad. I don't have it anymore, I'm gonna tell you. 
there is one thing that cured it for me and that is cardiovascular exercise. Seriously, hiking, running. I started doing it six hours a day. Yes, I know people have to work. I would walk wherever, take my shoes, stop the car, do that, and that's what I would do. And I overcame it. I wouldn't shower because I didn't want the water touching my skin. Like, it was weird. So I had that, yeah, cardiovascular exercise. I'm not joking you. So I learned, that's the only reason I run, to keep my mental health. And I have to do that. It balances me. And it's very easy to correct it, you know? Oh, God. I can't get any men. What are you talking about? Please. Um, no men approach me. They don't like me. And I don't care. Don't approach me, please. <laughs> Warning to all men. Stay away from me. <laughs> fucking need you. I don't want you. Um, yeah, no. When a woman, this, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> no, don't get me started. Do not get me started. But yeah, I'm good on my own. I can do everything myself. Weightlifting, but it's weightlifting. If you can get, if you can raise your heartbeat, cardiovascular, acupuncture, literally running every day. I got up, run. They say that cardiovascular exercise brings endorphins to your brain. So that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah, I'm over men. I couldn't even begin to start thinking about even speaking to one because I'd have to be polite. <laughs> I can't be polite. <laughs> that's why I hang around my family members and John. They're used to me and that's what I'm going to do. That's it. That's all. Um, that's all I can do. Now, uh, Tourette's is a form of OCD. I find it hilarious. It's not for them. It's not for them. <laughs> it's it, it's not for them because they they their brain says to say it and they say what we're all thinking out loud. But when I hear it with people, I don't think it's odd. I'm like, of course they want to say that. Of course they want to say that. Of course. Um anyway. Yeah, John said to me, he said to me, uh, you know, he felt guilty. So that's why he pushed me away. And I'm thinking, if you felt guilty about marrying somebody younger, you could have pushed me away when I was in my 30s. I don't have what it is now to even give a fuck. So like all you did was make it, yeah, Wildwood, there you go, little monkeys. That's where I ran to, Wildwood. I ran that for 37 years. That one I ran up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way over to Glendale, back down, back and around, back and around, back and around, <laughs> like a little little hamster on a trail. Also carried my kids up there pregnant and on a backpack. Um, yeah, I know the marriage thing, right? But yeah, it's weird. It's very weird. Aw, thank you. Thank you for that, you guys. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, John, I mean, I think John liked the idea of me being outspoken, but, you know, we think very differently about, he, he thinks a little bit more, hmm, how do I want to word it? He's very liberal when it comes to drugs. He doesn't really think the same way I do about it. And that is something that is a absolute deal breaker for me that if you don't tell your children that they should not be doing drugs and you tell them any of it's okay then you're just a fucking asshole whoever you are I do believe you should try your kids are going to do what they're going to do I I know this and I don't care but while you're raising them you should really be hitting home that what it does not yes Elton John when I saw him in person looked like an old Jewish woman wobbling across the stage so does Rod Stewart right now so does Rod Stewart. So does Rod Stewart. <laughs> Go look up Rod Stewart. Tell me that's not a girl. Um, tell me that's not a girl, right? Yes, I'm talking about my ex-husband, John. Yes. I, literally, John is very liberal. He thinks if you want to chip in drugs and do it, it's okay. I don't feel that way at all. Like, my job as a mother, my only job as a mother was not to help you defile yourself. So I'm going to have to stand up against anything 
that literally is going to destroy you in the long run. So I literally, yeah, procrastination, Angie girl, is you feeling like you're not perfect and so you don't do it. So you have to take the judgment out of the way and just basically step into taking action. So you're a perfectionist and therefore you're too afraid of making a mistake. Um, Rod Stewart is old, but he looks like a woman to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw him and I'm like, he's a chick. Um, he, I don't like being messy either. He's a chick. Now, just so you know, for those people asking, if you've, how do you not do Botox? I don't do Botox and I'm not lying about it. Well, you can tell, look. I've never done Botox. I have a phobia about food and choking on food and Botox is a toxin. It is a food toxin. I cannot do it. I mentally could not put it into my face and not have panic attacks. So that's not gonna work. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There you go. Look up Broad Stewart right now. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm laughing. Okay, listen. If you guys want to reach Deanna, okay? If you want to reach Deanna, her website is DeannaDanner.com. So you can go over there. If you want to reach Brian for astrology, it's Brian Evis, E-V-I-S, on Facebook. So go click on that for the astrology or Deanna for the psychics. So Deanna's is DeannaDanner.com and Brian's is Brian Evis on Facebook. Message him, look him up, check him out, do that. So you know, because people ask. Um, that's what they ask. Yeah, you might have seen right there, terrifying. Okay, Steven Tyler looks like an old lady too. No, I don't think Brian teaches astrology anymore. I'm thinking not. There are people who do. He might know some who do. But yeah. Anyway, so hi from Sweden. Tiny and skinny. Yeah, there was Jerry Springer. Oft I think Jerry Springer was in his 70s or whatever. Um, one guy on YouTube said 2024 will show large. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, wait, B. John's... I don't know what that is. <laughs> I never liked David Bowie in any sense of the word. Of course, Steven Tyler does what he does. I know what Steven Tyler does. And no matter what anyone says to me, I don't, you know, I love Steven Tyler, but yeah, he's very scary looking. Well, yeah. But see, they're all inverted and born into families where they have inverted families. So they are inverted, meaning these people in power give their children hormones from, yes, John and his friends, his friends snitch to John about what I say. I'm not saying anything anyone doesn't know. I mean, if you hang out in a bar for 40 years while you're married, I guess it's pretty self-explanatory, your mindset. Your mindset is you like bars. What's in bars but drug addicts and alcoholics? I mean, it's okay once in a while, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't think that's a secret. You know, I don't think that's a secret. So, yeah, there you go. Bad dude. Yeah, I know all about that. Yeah, I don't like or Jagger or Bowie. I do like Mick Jagger, but I just literally never liked David Bowie. I just, yeah. Um, Tracy Twyman, her husband, is still suing me at this point. So it's been a year now, and I believe we have court in February. So I am being... I am literally being sued for, go look up the lawsuit online, Sloan Bella versus whatever the fuck his name is, Al, Tracy Twyman's husband, whatever, I don't know his name. But I'm literally, and this is what's so fucking offensive, and I reject it, I resent it, and I can't believe it's going to go to court because it's so fucking stupid. But if you're a public person, like I'm public now. I'm not I'm not like David Bowie or any of those people. But if you're a public fucking person, I have a right to make a comment about a public person. And this person um yeah, this person 
will literally, okay, so if someone's in the public eye and you have a personal opinion of them and you state it and their relative who you didn't know existed, I didn't know who her husband was. I'm not going to be careful. I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care. I have an opinion and I was asked a question and I answered a question. It's free speech. There's no intent there to cause harm to anybody. And nobody, I don't think David Bowie was schizophrenic. I'm just think, I'm thinking not. There was no intention at all whatsoever, none, to comment or make the husband feel anything because I didn't know she was fucking married. I literally barely knew who she was. I was focused on Isaac Cappy. The only thing I knew was from the radio show saying, do you want to read this energy? So I focused on this motherfucking energy. Five days after this woman passed, I said nothing about her husband. So the fact that the court is being used by a person who wants to profit financially off a dead person, off a psychic who spoke an opinion based on what she does and has a feeling of is complete fucking uh, shut up. It's a malicious lawsuit and it's ridiculous. And it basically crosses freedom of speech. Okay. So if you're public, like Jeffrey Epstein, I'm going to say it right here, did not, and I repeat, kill himself. Okay. He did not. That is my personal opinion. Same thing. That's all I said on the radio. And I think what I said, now I have the transcript, but I believe what I said, and you guys can go back to Ground Zero and listen to the radio show. But what I, he tried to say I wouldn't have made money if I didn't do that radio show talking about his wife. Excuse me, arrogant idiot. I had a career for 40 years. That was thrown out of court, that part. Anyway, literally, Isaac Cappy, I got a picture of the bridge. Isaac Cappy... I believe was scopolamined. And that I got when I was talking to Bobby on the way home last year from Arizona when this fucking idiot was, and I'm going to say you're a fucking idiot if you're trying to sue me for free speech on an opinion on a radio show when I didn't even know you existed. Sorry, that's what you are. Anyway, when I was driving home, I got the word scopolamine. 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 Okay, so that's like a... I don't know, a drug that makes you do whatever. Yeah, I don't care what kind of lawsuit it is. I didn't do what they're saying. So, and I, I, I don't know what to say. If, like the other people in the lawsuit, I had to hire, I'm not saying Isaac was or wasn't. wasn't. What I said is, I don't believe he committed suicide. I do know that Isaac was working with Tracy Twyman. And I do know that Isaac handed off paperwork for the FBI to, to Tracy Twyman, who was a reporter looking into child trafficking in the Four Corners and was staying at a campground prior to her passing, where allegedly she was attacked, then went home, and then ended up dead. That's all I know. But neither one of them, in my opinion, committed suicide. Jeffrey Epstein didn't. Marilyn Monroe didn't. So stop. So I, if I can't say that, if I can't say, and who, who, and that's a good point, you bring up Tom Hanks, who is funding these fucking frivolous lawsuits? It's an abomination in America that you can sue somebody for bullshit okay, for bullshit, and the person defending themselves is supposed to get a lawyer. I'm not getting a lawyer because my legal money is going to Keith's lawsuit, period, okay, is going to P Keith's lawsuit not to defend myself for making a fucking statement when asked to as a guest and, uh, right? No, I'm not. But the people, the people in that lawsuit, some say 30 other people, they've hired lawyers and they are being financially terrorized by some person who believes he has a right to sue them to try to shut them up from their first 
free speech. If the person is public, a published author, a television personality, a radio personality, I don't give a fuck. That includes me. So if I end up dead and someone says she didn't commit suicide, my husband, ex-husband, does not have a right to sue them. I am a public fucking per. Well, as far as YouTube, I'm not hugely public, but I'm semi-public. Does not have a right to sue. Oh my God. I, listen, I picked up on a feeling. <laughs> I blame the Clintons. Yeah, get sued by them. And then to add insult to injury, to have the cocksucker that drove into my son the year before he died in a lawsuit with a night with a 1996 car who left a police statement saying he wasn't hurt, turn around and sue me for 16 million. I mean, he's trying to and fuck him too. And saying he served me. Hello, asshole. I haven't lived at the residence since 2019. That was not me who you served because I don't fucking live there liar. Anyway, 16 million. So you can see America is fucking out of control. The system is broken, broken, broken. Keith is dead, literally dead. And this idiot is trying to sue him saying he served him <laughs> and served me. I filed for divorce in 2019. It's ridiculous. Okay. Well, fucking do that because anytime you do that, I send it right back to you and it will happen right back to you in whatever way it does because I give it to God and send it back. However, right? Right. And enema I, is so full of shit. So full of shit. It's like you're suing me for an opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion under the First Amendment. And if you want to fight that in court, I'm going to show up in court for that loser. And I'm going to talk about it. I have a right to think what I think. You're trying to scam me for money. You don't deserve respect from that. You are, I know, the USA is such garbage. 16 million. Who's dead? My son's a dead one. You hit him with your car. We were found at no fault, meaning Keith was on my insurance. That's why I'm being sued, because I have the policy. But the guy T-boned Keith, nobody was found at fault. Our insurance didn't pay him out, so he decided to sue me civilly for $16 million. Who does that? How do you, what do you think you're going to get $16 million from? You're not even going to get $5,000. You won't even get $100 from me. You can kiss my ass and suck my dick. You are not getting anything from me. I will not do it. Tallulah's under the table. She knows I'm on a rant. Anyway, 16 million. Please, shut up, right? <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Shut up, right? I mean, geez, what? 16 million. This loser for 16 million. I mean, the other guy, the reporter's husband, all they do is an asset search and they're like, oh yeah, she has assets, so let's sue her. What's that? What is that? Yeah, fuck you. You ain't getting shit, okay? And I don't care what the court says. First Amendment, I can have an opinion. And if you're going to tell me I can't have an opinion and a judge is actually going to fucking rule that I can't have an opinion because this guy says I intentionally caused them harm, I didn't even know he existed. So no, I don't care. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's absurdity. I can't, I literally can't stand it. I literally can't stand it. I'm like, you know, now I'm like, who else is going to sue me? Who all, I mean, seriously, what the hell? And it's all because I said what I felt. And look at YouTube. If you say the word sexual abuse, they go essayed. No, call it what it is. We have labeled it sexual abuse in the English language. That's what we call it. Sexual abuse, pedophilia, fucking rape. Say it, the Danny Masterson trial, rape, right? Right, that's what's going on. What, we're not allowed to talk about that? We're not allowed to say the word? Because it might hurt somebody's face. Shut up. Grow up. Grow up. Shut up. Her mouth, it's a sexist to say hermaphrodite too. Okay, no, it's not. Hermaphrodite is both, please, it's not sexist. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, exactly. Why do you feel that you are being... Why do I feel I'm being targeted by Tracy Twyman's husband? Because he filed a lawsuit for $200,000 saying I intentionally set out to harm him when all I did was answer a question on a radio show. That is why. Why would I be in a fucking lawsuit when I was hired by a radio show as a psychic, which is what I am, okay? And they say they don't believe psychics. And I never said any one word about the husband, but but because I showed up on a radio show, because I showed up on a radio show and said what I felt, which is free fucking speech about a woman that is a public figure with no intention, did not mention her husband. That's why, that is why I feel like I'm being targeted. That is why I feel like it. Who puts a lawsuit out like that against a fucking psychic who doesn't mention his name? I didn't mention his name. I said what I felt from her, which had nothing to do with him. She spoke about other things to me. This was the feeling I had. What, I can't have a fucking feeling? I'm not allowed to say it? Why am I not allowed to say it? Why am I not allowed to say it? The news is allowed to say that vaccines save lives and they don't. The news is allowed to say that COVID vaccines are good for you and they kill people. So I'm sorry. What, what, I'm not allowed to say what I feel, but the news can blatantly lie when they know different? Huh? I'm on a radio show. And I'm on an alternative radio show. And it's free speech, First Amendment, and the anti-slap law. Unless, of course, you can improve I intentionally did something. And you cannot, because I did not. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, hello, Jesus. No, they want to attack you. Uh, sound, I agree with Sloan. Be careful. Wait, I... I don't even know who, who you're, it's, I, hear me clearly. Don't tell me to be fucking careful. Do not tell, you guys, when you tell somebody to be careful, you're telling them to be scared. I don't appreciate it. I'm not going to be careful. Don't say that to me. I'm not fucking afraid. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Do whatever you want. But don't, yeah, I know telling someone to be careful is a fucking threat. I'm not afraid of you. If you think I'm afraid of you, you're crazy. I can't wait to get off the planet. So please come here and fucking do something about it. Be safe. No, I don't, don't say that shit. Why wouldn't I be safe? Why wouldn't I be safe? Your ego will take you down. I don't care. No, I don't care. Say whatever you want. I'm going to continue to say what I do when I'm doing my work. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm not going to be quiet while I'm asked on a radio show a question about somebody when I feel it. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do that. Sorry, if you want to say that's my fucking ego, then you say it. But I feel if you silence yourself because you're a pussy ass bitch, right? Which is what you are when you say that. I feel, okay, I feel <laughs> that you are a pussy ass bitch when you do that, right? I feel that if you can't stick up, even if you're afraid of dying, then you're not worth two shits on this planet because you're part of the reason that there's a problem. You're part of that reason, okay? You won't silence me. If I die, I will put it in the ears of the others that remain here. So understand that. You will not silence me. I will speak the way that I feel, period. Period. End of conversation. I've never been any different and I'm not going to stop now. I'm not afraid. And I wasn't afraid when I was five. And I wasn't afraid in my family to tell them what my dad was doing to me either. Okay. I spoke up to everybody. I'm not afraid. Yes, it is kind of spell casting. When they say be careful, that's what they're telling you. And you're not my parent. Like if I'm a little kid and you're saying, you know, watch what you're doing, just pay attention, you're in my family. But the way you're saying it is like I should shut up, okay? <laughs> shut up yourself. You be careful right back at you and I promise you that. So you be careful. You who tells me be careful right back at you tenfold, right? Tenfold. So you watch your back. You watch your fucking back. Oh my God, I just hate people. And be careful. You're stupid, okay? Stupid. I can't stand it. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. It is a trap. It is a trap. 
speak up. Oh, and, and the only reason anybody, I need a drink, I need a drink. The only reason any light worker, psychic person, person on the internet quiets up is because they're afraid they're going to lose money. That's it. That's the only thing these people who say be careful, they're driven by financial. Don't be careful. Speak. Speak, speak, speak. Whatever it is you're speaking up against. I need two drinks. Me too. <laughs> the only reason psychics say shit is because they're making money and they're afraid of not making money. They're afraid of losing money. That's the only reason. When you hear them go, oh, smexual, they're afraid of losing their money. Do not be afraid of, are you a Bible thumper? What is wrong with you guys? What is wrong? What If somebody's a Bible thumper, let them be that. It's better than being a pedo, isn't it? Why don't you say that to the pedophiles? Why don't you call up the celebrity pedophiles that we know? Ring, ring. Are you a pedo? Why are you asking somebody if they're a Bible thumper? If they're a Bible thumper, as if that's a bad thing compared to being a fucking pedophile. Phone them up and ask them if they're a pedophile. Do that to the government. Do that. Don't ask people about the Bible. What? Oh, are you overly religious? Do you fuck children? Phone up a Catholic parish and ask them that. <laughs> Please. Okay? Hello. I mean, come on. Um, I mean, no, seriously. They act as if reading the Bible is the worst thing you can do. When we got people on meth and fentanyl dying up, why don't you ask the Border Patrol man why they're letting the fentanyl dealers in here? Call up and ask that. Ring, ring. <laughs> That's what you need to do. Oh, my God. I can't. I know. Four trolls. I know. Fuck these trolls. Suck my dick trolls. They're AI. They're not even real. So anyway, I know they need to get a life. No, I'm serious. Oh, are you a Bible thumper? Oh, are you one of those sober people? Huh. Yeah. Are you a pedo? Like, I'm sorry. Why in this country? This is another thing. Now I'm on a rant. I must shut up. But why in this country, in the name of Jesus, amen, why in this country do we applaud the shittiest fucking behavior? Oh, I know, smexual. What, what does that mean? Just say sexual. If, you, if you're allowing YouTube, the internet, the government to tell you that you can't say the word sexual, sexual abuse, rape, pedophilia, these are words already in the English language. If you are letting the government decide that, you are allowing them to censor you, it's completely wrong. You have every right to say the word sexual, period. What the fuck? What, what? What? Anyway, why in this country do we go, oh my God, they're a drug addict. And then give them every license to continue causing chaos, but then insult somebody that has a religion. Like, what is that? Why would you not go to the person causing the chaos? And stand back and say, you are causing the problem. No, we applaud the chaos and we critique the behavior. We all say when we have our own children, we don't want them to be, hey, my son would be, your son would be ashamed of you. Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, bringing up my son, where is this card? Look at this, you all. Look at this beautiful Mother's Day card from my little Jason. My son is not ashamed of me. He's super proud of me. And he gave me a $100 gift certificate for Starbucks. That is how proud of me he is. I know. It was super fun. <laughs> super fun. Um, yeah, no, it's always an attack on Christianity. As if the Middle Eastern religions where the women have to be cloaked, caped, and killed is a good thing. Um, it's just ridiculous. We are completely, completely, yeah, he wrote with his, that's his own handwriting. That's my Jason's hand and so much coffee. <laughs> so much coffee for his mother. But here's the thing. Here's the thing with people. Why do we encourage the worst behavior on planet earth? And when somebody steps into their authentic self, whatever that is, we, that was from Jason. When, they step into their authentic self, okay? When they are authentic and they're sober and they feel things and they eat properly and they take care of their body, all the things that we tell our little kids to do, 
but then we encourage them to do the opposite. We tell them that a little bit of drugs is okay, so then they become drug addicts. We tell them that wine at every meal is a good thing when it's actually not. We tell them, oh yeah, McDonald's, it's dinner, blah, 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 not good. So we lie to our own children because we do not lead by example. So why is that? That's a ridiculous thing. Anyway, I'm going to say it again. Honey Badger, thank you. I'm trying to read your hand, your handle. That person go fly. Yeah, I know. They don't deserve it. Exactly. Because they are children of the lie. Exactly. That's exactly right. If you love your children, you would say to your children, you would say to your children, I want you to be sober because you can think clearly and you can understand what's important to you. When your mind is altered, you do not think carefully. This is how 99% of abuse happens in this country. We don't think clearly. We have fathers that do things when they're drunk, mothers that do things for drugs and sell their children. If nobody cared and money wasn't their God, this shit wouldn't be happening. Um, so thank you, thank you for that, thank you. Um, exactly. Now look at this. I'm going to tell you about this. This is the most bitching thing I just got. I just went, remember I said I would, I would kill for my children. Remember I said that Shungite blocks every kind of psychic attack. Well, I got Sh elite Shungite right here. Shungite elite. I got these. These would be like $600 if they came from Russia. But these came from, where did they come from? Colombia. So now I can afford them. I was so excited. Yeah, Chirpy was super nice. Little Chirpy. I was so happy to get that. So happy to get that. Whatever you want for your children, you should actually live for yourself. Because your children learn from you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that so much. Thank you all for the super chats. So I'm going to say it again. If you want to look up an astrology reading, look up Brian Evis on Facebook. If you're looking for Deanna, she has a website up, DeannaDanner.com. So you can go either one of those ways, psychic astrology, whichever you want to do. Um, no, Jason's not treating me like a human because I bought rocks. I'm just simply pointing out that I got lucky because now they're finding the Shungite in Colombia, and it's definitely cheaper. No, when it comes in from Russia, the little ones like this are like over a hundred dollars. They're like, well, they're like eighty dollars, honestly. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, and the government is happy to take. There's Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, you know I'm gonna go. This, this it's a total dumpster fire. Bobby, look, look what I got. The Elite Shungite from Colombia. It's cheaper so I could afford it. I was so happy. Very true. I stayed in abusive marriage for the kids. Now they treat me like their dad did. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Whatever. Oh, look, it's leaving the black on me. Um, whatever you allow your th this is something. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, what the way that I would word it is. If you don't have enough respect for yourself, even if you're afraid to leave your children or afraid to stand up for yourself, you do risk that your children, if you leave, won't talk to you. But if you allow yourself to be abused, then they're going to think they can abuse you because you've been abused. So you don't want to actually stay if you're in those circumstances. But I literally understand why you would stay if you're in those circumstances. Because number one, you may not have the money to leave. Number two, you don't want to leave your children. Number three, you're trying to make your marriage work. So I totally get it. But yeah, thank you so much, you guys. This is so awesome. There, so awesome. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this just because, yeah, you're brave to leave. It's, it's very hard to leave a marriage. I never understood this, but literally... Marriage, let's see, uh, let's see. I didn't even hear what you said. I didn't even understand this, but when I got married, I literally took, see, you stuck with your mom, but you don't know that that was necessarily the right choice. 
It's a choice that was prevent, presented to you and told to you, but sometimes it's backwards. You know what I mean? Sometimes one, one parent is vilified and, or, or both parents are vilified or whatever. But the marriage deal through the government, because you signed the papers, I never realized how fucking loyal I was. So I think it's dangerous to get married because once you do, if you happen to be a loyal person, male or female, you're going to stick in that, right? You're going to stick in it no matter what. And we're taught to do that. And that's not actually the right thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. If somebody is not doing for you what you need them to do, you are wrong to give up your own happiness for a marriage, even if you're scared, even if it's your kids. Oh, selenite, I love it. Selenite, put it under your pillow. Don't wash selenite. It, it doesn't need clearing like that. You can put it outside. Don't get it wet. Put it under your pillow. It aligns with your crown chakra. And it's so great. So I think if you're married to an addict or an alcoholic, you need to separate as well because they're married to their drug or their alcohol, their addiction. So it's not like good to do that, but we're taught to do it as if we can change it. We can't change it. So we are given the wrong advice on this planet in so many ways. It's sickening, <clears throat> sickening, sickening. I've never been married 44. Good for you. Thank you, Sloan. My take on Jamie Foxx, actually somebody on here said it. He's probably being cloned. And I think that projections, yes, exactly. I think I got the judgmental too. I get it all the time. Like the digs, the judgmental. I don't care if you judge me. I don't care. Um, Jamie Foxx, I think, is purposely being shut down. And he probably is being turned into a clone. And it's probably a Kanye thing. If Kanye wears those sweatpants out anymore, I think I'm going to slap him. How is that guy a fashion icon? How is that guy a fashion icon? Have you seen the sweatpants he's wearing? <laughs> they look like, you know what they look like? I expect him to come out in leggings, like 1986 leggings and those, those um, sweatpants that the ballet dancers used to wear. That's what he looks like. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, so anyway, here's what, 56 and never been married. Good for you. The fake Kanye is wearing the weirdo sweatpants. Yeah, he got his skims on. Okay, here's what I wanted to say. To you, I want as many prayers for our friend Jackie on here. who MC Hammer time. There you go. Jackie. So Jackie is a fellow Leo. Jackie lives in Missouri. And Jackie is having medical issues from injuring herself, breaking, I think it was her femur last year, and is having terrible problems with the recovery. And if you remember... Jackie, and I'm sure Natalie remembers on here, Jackie's daughter, Angie, she was murdered, and I believe it's going to be five years now. It could possibly be six coming up this Father's Day. Angie, Angie, who Natalie on here actually picked up with Keith, which was really an interesting story. But Jackie already has gone through that and is now having huge medical repercussions from negligence at the hospital after her surgery and cannot walk at the moment after having her surgery. And I don't even know if I should be saying that, but she needs prayers so that she can be helped by the, yes, her femurs, her femur and her walking so that she can be helped or led in the correct direction to be able to walk again. So she's literally in bed and I think that we need to pray for her. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we need to figure out something else that can happen. But maybe the prayers will open the doorway. So Jackie had her lovely daughter, Angie. And Angie passed away and I believe it's Father's Day. And a shout out to Jackie and her husband and her friend who's taking care of her. She actually has a friend who's lovely enough to take care of her in her house because somehow the insurance has dropped the ball. The hospital has dropped the ball. What the fuck are you supposed to do in this country when that happens if she didn't have her lovely friend? So anyway, Angie crossed over. I think it was 2017. It might have been 18 if I'm incorrect um, about that. But Jackie has been through so much and was so kind to me after Keith passed away that I don't even know what to say. She's a lovely person. She's a very lovely person. 
so kind. She needs a second opinion and she needs, but she is in like a world of hurt at the moment and has been sick. So just prayers for Jackie, if anybody cares to or wants to, because the system is so broken and broken. And she's such a lovely woman who has endured so, through so much and was so there for me when my son passed away. Um, even given her savage experience with what happened with her daughter, which she fought every second for her daughter. So that's what I would say with that. I feel like Jackie needs all of our prayers, those of us that do pray. So we are praying for Miss Jackie because I really do believe prayers heal. I do. The medical system is horrific. In every single state, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The legal system, the medical system, I just, I'm like, I'm blown away with the shit that people put up with and have happened to them that is so much like, what are you supposed to do, honestly? And yet there's people smoking crack, driving better cars and living off the system. They have no problem. But the people who need it, they have a huge problem. So it's very inverted. I guess the word would be inverted and be system. Anyway, thank you all. I know the power of prayers for Miss Jackie. Thank you all. Thank you all. Sorry I'm ranting. I'm going to shut up and go eat my popcorn. Oh, yeah, I'm not eating it. I want fries. I want fries. <laughs> I want fries. Okay. Bye, you all. Let's see. I'm only going to a doctor as a last resort. Well, if you break something, though, you're kind of like stuck. You have to get a surgery. Um, an alert came over my phone that Ann Hesh was laid to rest. I thought she died a while ago. That's interesting. If she crossed out of her body, she was laid to rest. But they captured her alive. So then she disappeared. So she's been captured and they've captured her consciousness. So yeah, not good. Okay, thank you guys. I love you all and happy Mother's Day. Belated to all the mommies out there. All the mommies. The mommies who do so good in every which way that deserve applause because they try so hard. They, I know they killed her. Obviously she was alive in the car. She didn't catch fire. And she might be alive. She was alive. That's for, that's exactly. Okay, bye, you guys. I will be back soon. Hopefully, I'll be sensible soon. To all of the robots and bots and the AIs, you got to do better. You got to do better. You're boring me.